Okay, next we need to understand how to raise a power to a power. So for example, if I asked you to take x to the third and second, I'm sorry, and raise it to the third power, here's what I mean longhand. I mean take the base of x squared and write it down three times. Multiply times itself three times. That's the longhand way of figuring this problem out in case I forget the trick to doing this. But when I multiply, I add my exponents and 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So come on back over here and look at this 2 and look at this 3. And from now on you can say that if I have a variable raised to a power and I raise that to the power, from now on I can multiply this 2 times this 3 or this m times this n. Let's do it again. So for your practice, a to the fifth raised to the second power would be a to the tenth power because 5 times 2 is 10. If I did this with multiple variables, no big deal. I would still use the property and for my base of x, x squared raised to the fourth power, shortcut is 2 times 4 would give me x to the eighth and y, this is raised to the third power, but then raised to the fourth, shortcut 3 times 4 is 12. I'm all done. If I have a variable in the parentheses that doesn't have an exponent, it's understood to have an exponent of 1. And so 1 times 7 is 7. And 3 times 7 is 21. Many people, when there's no 1 here, they just see that they have to raise the a to the 7th power. They just see that. So if I have x, y over 3, all those have exponents of 1. So everything has to get squared in this problem. So the x has got to be squared, the y has got to be squared, and the 3 has got to be squared. And I need you to call that 3 squared a 9 in order to finish up this problem. Okay, let's, let's just make it a little bit more difficult. So in the parentheses, I'm going to have two factors in the numerator, and I'm going to have a minus 3 and a z to the third in the denominator. This is a 4 right here. I think I'll fix it up a little bit. And all of that's going to be cubed. So remember, everything has an exponent. Even this x has an exponent of 1. And 1 times 3 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. See this negative 3? It's got an exponent of 1. So the negative 3 is going to have to be raised to the third power because 1 times 3 is 3. And the z will be raised to the ninth power. And then finally downstairs a negative 3 times a negative 3 times a negative 3 is a negative 27. It does not matter where you put that sign. It can stay with the 27. It can go out in front of the fraction bar. It can even go up in the numerator. All right, so that was raising a power to a power. Let's look at division of monomials where the base is alike. So for example, x to the seventh divided by x to the fourth. And then we're going to show you why some things work. So x to the seventh means x times x times x times x times x six times, seven times. And x to the fourth means x times x times x times x, four times. But what I want you to see is that I could reduce x over x because that's equal to the number one. And another x over x is equal to the number one, and another one, and another one. And what I'm left with when I reduce all those one times one times one times one is one times x to the third power. So look at this, x to the seventh over x to the fourth. Remember, when you multiplied, if the bases were alike, you added the exponents, that's supposed to be a three. And so when you divide, if the bases are alike, you're going to subtract the exponents. I always say subtract this one, take this one, and subtract that one. So a to the m 
over a to the n, bases are alike, then you always take the numerator's exponent and subtract the denominator's exponent, especially in the event that you have some negative exponents. So what if you have y to the 13th divided by y? So what's the exponent right here for this y? Yeah, that's a 1. And 13 minus 1 is 12. Let's do it again. And we'll keep so now let's do this with several variable factors. And so let's concentrate on the a's first. So a to the fifth divided by a to the second, second you need to subtract their exponents. 5 minus 2 is 3. I'm going to go ahead and write this here. 5 minus 2. Next, concentrate on the b's because they have like bases you can subtract their exponents so this will be b to the second power because you took 8 minus 6 and we're all done let's do this again but let's do this with numerical values in the problem so a 4 and a 16 I'll put an a to the fourth here an a down here a b to the eleventh here and a b to the second here so here's the big reason I'm putting a number in here you don't take 4 minus 16 and get a negative 12 it's only for the a's and the b's where these bases are alike you'll take the 4 minus 1 and you'll get a to the third power and the 11 minus 2 and you'll get b to the ninth power but the 4 over the 16 you have to reduce and you just have to say 4 divides into 4 once and into 16 4 times and so you either have 1 quarter a to the third b to the ninth or you can write it as 1 a to the third b to the ninth over 4 and you don't need that 1 you could write it as a to the third b to the ninth over 4 since the numerator reduced to a 1. So all these ways that you can write this. Okay, finally, let's talk about 0 as an exponent. That's a tricky one. So first I'm going to tell you that anything raised to the 0 power is always equal to 1. So that's the, the rule. But let's talk about why. So let's take x to the fifth divided by x to the fifth and we just got done doing some division and in that division process we said that we would subtract their exponents if the bases are alike so 5 minus 5 would give us x to the 0 power however upstairs I have x times x times x times x times x and downstairs I have x times x times x times x times x well I have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 which equals 1 not to mention that anything divided by itself is always equal to 1 isn't 7 divided by 7 equal to 1 so isn't x to the fifth divided by x to the fifth equal to 1 however the rule for division says that we would subtract the exponents so we now say that anything raised to the 0 power is equal to 1 anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. Here, anything to the 0 power, this would be 3 to the 0 times x to the 0, which would be 1 times 1, which is 1. However, if I wrote 3x to the 0 without parentheses, this one's with parentheses, this means 3 times 1, which is 3. And let's try another tricky one. A negative 3 to the 0 power plus 7 to the 0 power. So this just means give me the opposite of whatever. So I wish I could, you know, cover this up without, you know, I, I can try it. So I'll cover that up. 3 to the 0 power is 1. But then I've got to put that negative sign on it. So that's a 1, and I've got to put the negative, seven, uh, negative sign on it. 7 to the 0 is 1. So this expression is equal to 0, even though it looks rather odd to begin with. It really is just a negative 1 plus 1. This this ends our segment on studying exponential um, factors where we multiply and therefore add the exponents, divide, we subtract the exponents, raise a power to the power, or raise anything to the zero power. We'll move on to combining like terms and simplifying algebraic expressions.